You know, looking back, I'm uh, pleased with how last Saturday won, especially the first half. I thought we came out, uh, played Mississippi State football. I had 11 guys running the ball on, on defense, playing hard. Uh, offensively, thought we played with, uh, with some good tempo, uh, pretty aggressive approach to the game, getting after people, uh, able to run the football. And um, those are things that, that we really like to do. I think that hour and however, hour and 20 some minute halftime break, I think that uh, uh, that's always tough, just keeping the focus, I think, uh, on the team, keeping the intensity up over that break. So uh, I don't think we had as, as good a second half as, as I would have liked to have had um, in the game, but, uh, you know. Uh, I'm pleased with our guys making the plays we needed to make to win down the stretch uh, to win that football game. So um, this week, obviously going to be a, a much different challenge going on the road, a very difficult environment to go play in uh, against an excellent football team that's got talent across the board at every position. Um, you know, they got uh, dynamic playmaking wide receivers. They got, um, you know, probably – the best running back in America, and, and but he's just one of a stable of great running backs that they have. Uh, a bunch of veteran players on the offensive line on that side of the ball. A lot of playmakers on the defensive side of the ball with uh, dynamic secondary, uh, physical, athletic defensive linemen and some bot linebackers uh, that have played a bunch of football that can really run. So uh, you don't, they don't have a lot of weaknesses on their team. Uh, you look at the personnel, they, they have as, as good a player as anybody in America. And um, so it's going to be a great challenge for us in a tough environment to go out there and, and, uh, and find a way to win. Questions? Coach Martinez started the second half at left mm -hmm. tackle. Just what did you see on film from him and talk about the, the offensive tackle rotation you guys are having? Yeah, well, I mean, we want to we rotate guys. I mean, I, I love rotating guys. I mean, I think if you watch us play, I love getting guys reps in the game. Um, I, I thought he, you know, he, he did some good things. He missed a couple of uh, critical things in the second half. Um, you know, it just comes from experience, comes from trust and knowing what to, what to do and, and, and trusting your technique and what's going on on the field. But, um, you know, uh, the, the more we can get guys ready to play and, and be game ready and have game experience, the, the better off we're going to be in the long run. Was they all right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're rotating them through. Uh, with Will Coleman, is he going to be back this week? And what kind of boost does he do when he comes yeah, back? Yeah, if if, I mean, obviously, I mean, a senior player that was an explosive pass rusher for us. So he'll be, uh, it'll be, it'll be close to see whether or not he makes it back this week for us. Um, but uh, you know, uh, a guy that you know we we had put in as as, poss uh, as, as a starter for us going into the season. Um, you know, to lose him for the first couple games, obviously. So you see, I'm but getting them back is gonna gonna add depth because the other guys have gotten to play, other guys have gotten experience. So uh, it's just gonna add some depth to the defense. How do you ensure that you keep the same intensity that you had from last week to to go into this week against a a tougher, more difficult opponent on the road? Uh, well, I guarantee I'll bring the intensity every single day of practice and make sure if I as as the leader, I got to set that standard, and I'll set that standard really high to make sure we we play with that same level of uh, uh, that same sense of urgency. Um, you know that, that the desperate intensity we need to go win a game, and it, it's up to me to make sure that uh, I set that standard high, and then I'll make sure everybody lives up to that. Dan, I'll throw out the actually the entire offseason, you, you talked about consistency and a team being consistent. How have you seen that translate into the regular season, both being inconsistent and then consistent as well? Well, I, you know, I, I think with a lot of young players, they're trying, they're they're finding their way through it right now. Um, you know, and because game atmospheres are, you can't simulate games in practice. You know, you can't simulate the emotions, the plays, um, how how it affects you, and and having to come back and, and respond from adversity, respond from success, and put it behind you and play the next play. So uh, I, I think our guys are learning how to deal with that, learning how to be consistent um, from a play-to-play -play basis. Um, and then, you know, I mean, as young guys, it's something they're going to have to continue to, to grind on moving forward. Uh, 
Um, well, I think they have, you know, uh, they have athleticism, they have size, you know, and, and a little bit of physical maturity. I think that helps. A lot of times younger players getting on the field, um, a, a certain level of physical maturity is going to help that they're physically ready for the demands and can do the things we ask them to do that, um, uh, you know, where other guys sometimes, uh, you know, need a little bit more development, not that the other guys aren't going to be, uh, be great players, you know, and if you look at us throughout the year, some guys, you know, have, have a physical tool that fits in a little better right away day one, and other guys as they develop can actually bypass those guys and be even better players. Um, but, uh, but both those two guys have had that. I think just the size certainly helps them. How do you kind of assess um, changing the defense? We're seeing a lot of that 3-4, a lot of guys. We saw Marquise lining up and covering wide receivers. How, how do you feel like that? that group has handled it so far in the first two games? Well, pretty good. You know, I mean, we want to stay multiple. We want to be as multiple as we can on defense and give you different looks, moving from 3-4 to 4-3, um, putting different personnel on, on the field in different situations and, and try to create mat matchup advantages for our defense. So uh, I think our guys did it. You know, I mean, uh, to me, though, uh, defense comes down to 11 guys running the ball, tackling the football. And um, I, I think in the first half, we did that really, really well on Saturday night. How much does LSU changing quarterbacks? How much does that change their offense? How much does that make it tougher to prepare for them? I don't think they named a starter, right? And they have officially changed. Have they officially changed? Just, just I don't. Yeah, I'm. You know, I don't. It's a different guy, so you got to get ready for multiple guys, and each of them bring a little something different to the table. You've talked a couple times about having. Not so much a young team, but having new guys in new roles. Mm -hmm. How do you kind of – you talked about you can't simulate practice, but how do you bring up the fact that a lot of them are going into their first SEC road game environment and going into that situation for the first time? Yeah, we got to coach them up and get them ready for it. You know, I mean, it, again, you're not going to be able to simulate um, – I mean, we can't put 102,000 people watching practice yelling and screaming. So, um, you know, you got to try to simulate some of the adverse situations as best as, pe best as possible. Kind of jumping off that question, how do you prepare a player, maybe like uh, a Chris Stamps, not necessarily him specifically, mm -hmm. but someone who you didn't expect to maybe see the field this year but because of injuries, he's forced to, to more playing time. How do you balance getting him playing time but also not giving him too much? Well, I mean, that that's on the coaches, you know. I mean, that's what we try to do is is one of the things is put guys in, in situations and positions where they can succeed. Um, you know, and I think that's one of the things coaches get themselves in trouble and say, okay, the you know, this is what we do, uh, and so we're going to do it to, no matter what the personnel is. Um, you know, I think you always have to be able to adapt to your personnel and – uh, you know, for us personnel, due to injuries, and you know, our personnel is very different maybe than we thought it might be at this point. Um, and so we have to be able to adapt as coaches to make sure these are the guys that are playing. How do we put those guys in a position to succeed? AJ Jefferson, defensive lineman of the week this past this past week. Just yeah. his progression to where he is now as a leader and things. Just what what is he? Can you talk about where he was to where he is now as a senior winning yeah, this one? I mean, it's, I mean, night and day. I mean, not even close to where he's, you know, I mean, been. I think came in, he redshirted. Uh, very, very played minimally, if at all, as a redshirt freshman. Um, you know, started to, to get a little bit of rotation as a sophomore. Started, you know, then played a lot as a junior. And you just see the development within the program, not just, you know, his his physical development. Um, his, uh, you know, in, in being a little bigger, faster, stronger, uh, his technical development and being a better technique player, uh, understanding the game so that it allows him to use his technique and the scheme to go make plays out there on the field because he understands the game and what's going on. Uh, and he's grown having gone through all of that um, to be a leader and, and to, you know, make sure everybody understands that, you know, you, you – to get to where you are, if you're, you don't you don't just show up and and you're a great player. You have to work at it. He's worked for, you know, going into five years now at working to become a, a great player. So it's a great honor for him this week. But, um, you know, I, I think with him, it just shows the progression of what hard work and development can do for a player. Naming Nick the starter last week, what do you think that did for his confidence? Not to have to look over his shoulder. Yeah, I, I you know I. I, what I didn't want to do is, is you know, how we, we gave him reps. I don't know if anybody was really looking over their shoulder much all through camp. Everybody was just competing, even going into the game one. Um, 
But after that first game, I didn't want him to, to think that there was um, – that he needed to worry about that. You know, I think the, uh, the plan through camp and even through game one, I don't think there was any pressure of, of one way or the other. But going forward into the season, I didn't want him after the field. That's, I'm sure that that helped a little bit. Coach, there's some things obviously Nick did well and some things you'd like to see him work on. What's kind of your message to him this week to kind of clean up for LSU? Got to get better. You know, I mean, every single day you got to work to get better. Um, but not just him, that's all of our players, you know. Uh, you know, uh, you look at what he did, uh, you know, uh, he, uh, he, he, I think he set a school record for, for rushing by a quarterback, but um, and he wasn't like making dynamic runs, making seven people miss and running four people's over on a play. You know, he made good reads and the line blocked well. And uh, if you execute well, I think you can see that you're going to have success. If you execute poorly, you're not going to. And so uh, hopefully he just looks at the things he did well, continues to do those things well. Uh, look at the things where he made some mistakes. Um, and not make those mistakes again. Not to say he, he'll probably, I'm sure he'll make some different mistakes on Saturday night um, down at LSU. And, uh, but, you know, hopefully the, the mistakes he's already made, he corrects, he fix, he fixes and, and plays with confidence and understand, hey, you're going to make mistakes. And when you do, that's fine. Let's respond from a comeback and not make the same mistake again. How do you go about improving? I know you mentioned it last Saturday, the red, red, red zone efficiency there. What, what have you seen on tape and how do you get better? Um, I think it's everywhere. You know, um, I got to do a better job making sure I'm putting us in the right situation. Uh, you know, we got to do a better job executing uh, certain deals. You know, I. It, it, what I'd say, I guess, is, is, is it's everywhere. There wasn't, there's not one glaring thing in the red zone. It's not, hey, this is our issue right now with the red zone. Uh, it's a little bit of everything. And, uh, you know, we practice there an awful lot, so our guys are very comfortable uh, down there. So uh, I don't see it as a major issue for us uh, with the comfort. I just think it's a, a slight tweak of uh, me making sure I have guys in the right situation and then us just executing a little bit cleaner. You talked about earlier the intensity in the second half needed to pick up this past area. The first couple of games have kind of been – the second half has been a little bit maybe, you know, mm -hmm. not as what you would have liked to have seen. Is there anything on film that you've seen to, to dictate why that's happened or is it, is it no, an intensity I think thing? there's a lot of just different situations, you know. I mean, you look um, – you know, week one, we got a lot of young players. We're leading at the halftime. It's hot. You come out, the stadium's pretty, it's almost empty. Um, in the second half, there's just not a lot of intensity anywhere, and young guys kind of not knowing how to respond to that situation. Um, you know, and I mean, we got to, they got to go. They got to learn. You know, last week, I'll be honest with you. I mean, I, I you can try everything, but you go, you, you get yourself up to a certain level of intensity. You go play for a certain level of intensity and then say, hey, go sit around for an hour and a half and then try to come back out and recreate that again. It's hard to get yourself up at that level again. It just, you know, I don't, I don't know if there's an athlete in the world uh, that could really try to, to bring themselves immediately back to that level, you know, with, unless you – if we knew halftime was an hour and a half, I bet we'd prepare for it a little bit better. <laughs> I know the cliche is defenses win championships, but recently yeah. with the game, the game changing, how has the offense kind of worked into that that dynamic? Well, I mean, you still got to score points. Uh, but I don't know. Go watch championship games. Defense wins championships. So, <laughs> uh, but I, I do think. I mean, I, I think there's also a rel the, there's a, re a a relative deal between offense and defense. Um, you know, offense, you're going to go high, super high up tempo offense, you're going to run more plays. Well, statistically speaking, I mean, you run more plays, you're going to get more yards, you're going to score more points. Um, but I still think you have to play great defense if you want to have a chance to win. And, and it's just, it, it, it's, you know, the relative, maybe what your standard or what you judge great defense to be might change depending on whether you're playing, you know, 60 plays or 85 plays a game the standard between the defense will change a little bit. But it's still all about you've got to play great defense to win. 
just to follow up on that, how, how has the importance of a quarterback changed recently and, and how the game keeps evolving? Well, I think, you know, I, I don't know. I think quarterbacks are always kind of the, the, the focal point. And I, I think what you just see is, is people making sure they're utilizing the talents of their quarterbacks and um, keeping defenses on edge, you know. I mean, I, there's still uh, – there's a lot of teams out there that are going to run the quarterback more than others. It uh, doesn't mean – that they're, that's the, the right deal. I, if there was one perfect offense or one perfect defense, everybody run the same thing. It's what making sure you put your players in a position to be successful and you do what you feel best fits your program, uh, the personnel you have, and what you believe in and what the players believe in. And I think that's, that's the most important thing schematically. Um, you know, I mean, you look at running quarterbacks can win and non-running quarterbacks can win. And, um, you know, both – uh, as long as the coaches, you're putting them in a position to be successful, you're going to have a chance. Coach, Jacksonville State had some success against LSU running some zone read last mm -hmm. week. Is there an advantage gained by seeing how they would defense that, or does it become a guessing game because you know they're going to make some adjustments this week? Well, you know, I mean, it's still really early in the season. Again, it's only the second game that they've played with. Their, they only have two games they've played with a new staff. So uh, you don't have an awful lot to go on. Uh, that way, but I guess you know the reverse is true for them watching us. They only have two games to watch our defense on too. So, um, you know, you just got to make your adjustments off of of what you see, what they expect. They do a good job. They mix it up, show you a lot of different looks, a lot of different pressures, uh, a lot of different uh, coverages on the back end. So you just have to you got to be disciplined and prepare for it and, and execute at a high level. I think Nick actually leads the SEC in yards per rush. Um, the Fitzgerald, that is. How, how does how do you envision the quarterback again, like Dak in the past, leading the team in rushing? Well, I, I think one of the things is if you're playing one quarterback and you're playing three tailbacks, you know, it, it's it, it's tough to compare them statistically because you know you got to do is compare the running back position to the quarterback. So, um, you know. And, and the running backs had more carries than he did. He had a couple long ones, which obviously are going to help his average. So, But uh, I, I, I would imagine by the end of the year, our running backs will have more carries and yards than our quarterbacks. Follow-up, you kind of answered it, but how does, this, how does the running quarterbacks this year compare to what Dak was doing the last couple of years? Well, I mean, not a whole lot different. I don't know that we, you know, I mean, our team, we were a little bit more passing team last year and a little bit more running team the year before that. Um, Nick's a different style runner than Dak was. So, you know, I mean, part of the look's going to be that way. I think he's faster uh, than Dak, a little more explosive with the ball in his hand than Dak. Um, you know, guys, see, I don't know, he has the physicality. I don't know if he's as physical a runner as Dak was. So it's a little different style of, of running.